place in the scripture, and we won't visit here too long, but as we come to this place, it's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. It's quite a crowd of people. For some reason, they didn't number the uh, ladies nor the children in that day as much as they numbered the men. But we know that there was 5,000 men that were in this occasion, in this place. And we know about this occasion, they come together and they've been gone so long that they're hungered. And if they would be sent back to their homes, they would faint in the way. And it's very interesting that the story that unfolds and the Lord said, okay, now what you guys going to do? And, and we'll read it in a minute. And they were trying to figure it out. And there's one concluding passage there that completely changes it. And that place and that time is where I want to make my text and visit with you for just a couple minutes. John chapter 6, if you have your Bibles here, let's look here together, can we, as we read. And after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he had done on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover feast of the Jews was nigh, and when Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto him, Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worths of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. And one of his disciple Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, and here's my phrase there found in verse 9, there's a lad here which has five loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Who would ever think, who would ever think that God would reach down and use the most unlikely people to do one of the greatest and the biggest miracles of all the Bible. You know, when they began to look for the solutions for the need, they first of all started at the top, and they worked their way down. And after they come to conclude that there's not a place to feed the people if, if we had money to buy, and we don't have enough money to buy, so what would we do? And he said, you know, there's a, just a lad here, and that's my thought I want to share. There's a lad here. There's a lad here. He's got five barley loaves and two small fishes. When it talks about a loaf, it was talking about a roll. We would call our rolls loaves. And so they had five barley loaves and two little fish. And it's very interesting. He said that there was a lad here. Just a couple thoughts. First of all, we find in the scriptures that little people, little people, little people were people that God used because they had big belief, big belief. One time there was a bunch of kids, they were around Jesus, and Jesus wanted to receive them, and the Lord watched the disciples as they were pushing these kids away and said, man, <laughs> let them alone, don't bother the Savior. Um, go talk to your daddy, go talk to your mama, but don't bother Jesus. And Jesus stopped the whole service and said, that's not the way this thing works. Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, oh, oh, that's not the way it works. He said, what you need to do is you need to allow these children to come unto me. And Jesus, my friend, was one that received children. It was interesting that children, my friend, were big believers. They were big believers. Their heart had not been tampered with by the world. They had not been through places of question and doubt, and people haven't dealt with their mind like they deal with yours and mine. And they, be, they were great believers because their, their belief was never moved. It was never tampered with. It was interesting that not only, my friend, were they big believers, we find, my friend, that they were big givers. This boy's got five loaves and he has two small fish. I can remember one time, so this has been a long, long time ago. I'll tell you how long it ago, Dennis, when there was a convenience store uptown right next to a butcher shop, Dennis. And the little girls, we lived at 140 Catherine Street, and my Becky and my Stacy are both little girls then. They went with me. I went in to get the gallon of milk, and it was safe to leave them set in the car and then, and it wasn't hot. I left them set in the car just a few feet away, come back out and brought two bags of M&Ms for the girls. And so I thought being a nice dad and treating the girls to some M&Ms, I could talk them out of a couple. You know what? I couldn't talk them out of them. Amen? I'm the one that bought them. I'm the one that thought about them, but I couldn't get two M&Ms a piece out of either one of them. You know what I'm trying to say? Where I'm going with that is simply, my friend, they were not only great believers, but they were great givers. Can you imagine trying to talk this little lad out of his lunch? Not a part, not a piece, the whole thing, everything. All the bread and all the fish, enough to get this little guy through his day and get him back home with his belly somewhat full of food. You know, my friend, this, this little guy, my friend, was 
my friend, a believer, but he was a great giver. It's very interesting, he was a great giver. Can I say that God reaches down and uses his little people for our examples and for our teacher? The Bible says about little people that they, they shall lead us, that they will, their faith will, will lead others. Their faith will allow us to follow and see the work of God. This little guy, five loaves and two fishes, literally come to a place where my friend, he was not only a great believer, but he was a great giver. And you know what? He led the way so others that were much bigger and much older than him, my friend, could see and could know the Lord. You know, it's very interesting, isn't it, my friend, that this little guy, there is a lad here. And tonight, and this day's been a day of, uh, in the Hillsboro Church, it's been a most amazing day when you see 60 high school and junior high kids up here. That's very impressive to me, and to hear the testimonies. And by the way, there was one more of our kids that went uh, to camp that was saved today, and Brother Justin just shared with me just a little bit. So that's interesting to see those kids. Can I say that, my friend, they were believers. Little people are believers. Little people, my friend, are givers. Little people, my friend, are leaders. But then there's something else that God does with little people that I find in this text. They're great receivers. God turned around and gave back to those little people. You know, it's interesting when all of the Adults had eaten, and the Lord said, uh, okay, now let's pick up the fragments that remain, that there's nothing lost. And so they went, and from the multiplication of feeding all these people, there was five loaves and two fishes. They picked up 12 baskets full. You know, the Bible does not record, my friend, what they did with these baskets full of food. Now, you can bring it to the Lord, and you take it to the Lord, and it's the size of a lunch, but when you get the result, when you get the fruit of it, when you get the reward of it, It'll be baskets full. This little lad, my friend, was my friend blessed, and God gave back to him. Now, uh, I know some of the stories and not all the stories, but uh, there was one of our guys, our little guys, I say little guy, uh, that come to our extreme program this summer, this last month, and uh, he gave his money, the monies that he'd earned and he'd worked for. Very interesting. And it's very interesting, my friend, when you hear that story my friend, of his own belief and desire. Now, these monies that, that we are receiving, my friend, are, are going to go to the feeding center to feed hungry people. I've personally been where the place where some of, some of not all of the places where they'll be. I've just been at one feeding center, two feeding centers there in, in the Philippines where you guys will be going. But what I do know is this. I do know, my friend, that God will bless my friend and they will be great receivers. God will, God will save. My wife, I believe tonight, is still over in the kitchen, and they've got that pulled pork, and it's just really waiting for us, so it'll be good. But you know what? She was saved in a special program in a little country church in the summertime. When they have gotten, as a guest, a, pre a policeman to come in, and he told those kids how to be saved. And they told this little girl that was there about eight years old, maybe nine, her writing is very scribbly when we see it. There's no date on it, but he told her that if she would ask Jesus into her heart, that he would come into her heart. And this little girl, not being exposed to much church at all and brought just because of a neighbor that cared, that little girl, my friend, gave her heart to the Lord, and that policeman gave her a little tiny blue, little tiny baby blue New Testament. And that little girl wrote her name in the back of it that she that time and that night received Jesus into her heart as her Savior. That little girl never being exposed to church very much and never been taught after that, took a long time until her daddy got saved. And when her daddy got saved, then they tried to reach her. And then at the age of 15, she come to understand that what she did as a little tiny girl at the age of eight or nine was a time and place when she got saved and her life was saved. And now she's a first lady of the Hillsboro Church. And it's all happened because my friend, her heart, heart, my friend, is open and she received it. Now, now think with me. Tonight, there's a lad here. Um, there's a lad here. Tonight in this place, tonight in, in this service, tonight beside you, tonight, my friend, yours, tonight, mine. Tonight, tonight my friend, these lads that are here, my friend, are, are here, my friend, and God in the very middle of it, all of it, doesn't overlook one of them. Jeremiah, in the Old Testament prophet, God tells him some things about him before he was born. And God talks to Jeremiah as if, my friend, that 
that he knew everything about Jeremiah before he'd ever get here. While he was still yet, my friend, unborn, and his parents knew nothing about him, that God literally, my friend, had a plan for him. And God knew him before he was even born. And can I say that you and I, as eternal souls, as eternal beings, my friend, that you and I, my friend, are like a lad here, and we are, we, we are beings, my friend, that God wants to live forever. God wants to live for eternity. That God never planned for us to be sick. God never planned for us to die. God never planned that. But because of our will and our choice and our decision, we made God. We brought God to a place he never wanted to bring, bring, be brought to. And my friend, now we have to do something as our own individual choice. Adam and Eve chose to turn away from God. You and I have to cho choose to turn to God. You know, there's not a good thing you can do with your hands or your eyes or your ears. There's not one righteous thing you can do to earn salvation but receive Jesus into your heart as your Savior. Receive the Lord into your heart as your Savior. Now, I ask you this question. What decision have you ever made in regarding your sin, regarding your soul, regarding your heaven? I, I worked on some other verses tonight to prepare for this message, and one of those verses is very interesting. They were in the treasury room, and the Lord began to teach them, and they didn't understand. But the Bible said that while he taught them, in the book of Matthew, while he taught them, many believed on him. There was something that happened there in the process of his delivering of his message. As he was telling about the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It'll make you free, the actual world. He said, and, and while they were listening, in that time, my friends, something happened in the hearts of people, and many believed on him. And he said unto them, and you shall, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall take the process, and it'll make you so changed, it'll make you free. He'll set you free. He'll make you free. You know, uh, we've always had uh, all kinds of critters when I was raised up and growing up. One of the fun times was when somehow, I don't know if it's the right thing to do in our day, but um, in our part of the world where I lived then as a young man, there was a bounty on fox. And so um, there was too many of them, and so they were trying to reduce the numbers. And so we got a den of baby fox, nothing like them. I mean, they're cute little red fox, beautiful things. And when they're little and tiny, they're just, just real playful. But I can remember my little brother letting the door open and all the foxes running away. I mean, just the little guys all running away. And I thought they were all gone. And so I got there and opened the door and rattled the dish and called for them. And they all come running back they all, because they become my friends and my pets. Can I say that God, God said, okay, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's not like opening the door and letting them all go. It, God said it's a process of making you free. One of the greatest fruits one of the greatest results of being saved is that God gives us truth and he sets us, he makes us free, makes us free from doubt, makes us free, delivers us from fear, makes us, my friend, my friend, delivered, my friend, without being a hopeless being, but a hopeful being, because, my friend, that's what he does. But he begins at a time and a place, and while Jesus saw, talked, many believed on him. Tonight I ask you this question. God has given to you and me little guys, and they don't stay little so very long, and they just completely grow up. I watched that little Cheyenne girl. She, her, her friend was holding her, and she walked up and tried to negotiate these steps and get them all figured out, you know. There's nothing like, they don't stay that little very long, and they'll just make their ways, and they'll grow all the way up. But God said, now, what I want you to do is I want you to, with these little tender hearts filled with love, filled with belief, filled with faith. I want you to expose them. I want you to bring them to my house so that they, at a very tender and a young age, my friend, they come to know you as Savior. Yes, we've had little guys, little girls give their heart, but also we've had big guys and big girls give their heart. Yes, and we have adults that are adult people that are giving their hearts and giving their lives to the Lord and belief. And so if you're like Shuggy, you had the chance to hear when you're very little and very young. But if you're like me, you don't get to have that choice. I didn't hear it until I was 17. Some of you don't have that story of the 17. You were much older than that and much older than that before you heard how to be saved. But thank God, God, my friend, loves you and he works with you and wants you to be saved. There's a lad here tonight that's a great believer. There's a lad here that's a great giver. There's a lad here that's a great receiver. 
There's a, there's a lad here, my friend, that God...